trip. I'd like to be from a phone. Getting the right around in two hours. I mean, you come back gradually. How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand dollars? Well, what happened? Well, what Stimulating work, really. When I get up in the morning, I am excited to get to the office. I mean, when out, for instance, here's a great statistic for you. Just the sesame seeds that we use on our buns alone. Want to take a guess? 92,000 pounds a year. That's over a million pounds since we first opened our doors to the public. Just the sesame seeds alone. 3,000 people employed just in the harvesting and horticulture of the sesame seeds that go on our buns. <laughs> Anyway, that's kind of a humorous statistic. If there is such a thing as a humorous statistic. Thank you. Uh, look, maybe I could help you more if you'd be a little more specific about what you want. We want to ask you about your training fund. What about it? We understand it operates with about $400,000. Oh, I don't know if it's that high. But more than $300,000. Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. What is his purpose? That's just what it says. Training. For the younger executives, mostly. But didn't you use the money for a trip to Jamaica, also for the purchase of jewelry? I don't know where you could have heard that. Are you denying it? I'm denying it. See, we just want to... I think this discussion has ceased to be fruitful. Do you know the way out? We'll find it. Pardon me, my watch is stopped. Do you have the time? Yeah, five after 11. Oh, thank you. Nice watch, worth about a couple of months of that secretary's salary. Okay, it'd be useful. Good one. Would you, thanks. You didn't get much out of Kibby, though. You didn't get much out of Kibby. Well, you did get 92,000 pounds of sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. And about a ton of fertilizer. It was a very classy stonewall, but it was a stonewall. I oh, yeah, no. I could feel that after doing this for a few years, you sensed these things. And I have more. We have more. We talked to an accountant who used to work for Mr. Ginty's. Which is the fast food chain, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Zion Incorporated. You know Mr. Ginty's. I'm familiar with their double cheese, double murder. He claims that the training fund was really used to train top management the fine art of ripping off their stockholders. It really authorized the purchases of huge quantities of liquor, cases of it sent to their homes? And clothes and jewelry. What's wrong? It's not so petty. Tacky. Talk about tacky. They may even have rigged their monthly contest so that their grand prizes went to the people that they wanted. You mean I ate all those greasy burgers and I didn't have a chance of winning the sweepstakes game? They would have had an outside accounting firm watch over the contest. They went through a few accounting firms. Apparently, the good ones quit when they sensed what was going on. Oh, it's worth another couple of days. It's doing okay. Sure. You haven't been here very long, but you'll learn that Rossi can be difficult. I can handle difficult guys. Oh, but you can. He's a good reporter. Well, I'm glad you see that, but if he starts to bug you... I like him. Hi, Carol. Hi, Lou. We'll see you after lunch. Dennis, for lunch? No, lunch for lunch. I make it a rule not to play with women I like who beat me six love. <laughs> okay, first you get one of these game envelopes, each order. Actually, you both only get one because you ordered together. No, you didn't know, so I'm gonna give you two. Okay? So then you need one of these game cards, which has all these pictures of, like, merchandise. And if you get all the parts of a picture, then you want, like a TV or a car or whatever. It's pretty neat, actually, I mean, especially if you're going to be eating here a lot. Well, 
You can read the instructions, and then if you have any questions, just come back and ask. Thank you. Have you ever won anything? Me personally? Employees can't play. Oh, two of those five are mine. Enjoy your meal. Uh -huh. Open up the envelopes and win me a car. I gotta get rid of that wreck I'm driving. Nuts. This is part of an AM FM radio. Mm -hmm. I got an ocean. An ocean? That's part of the trip to Hawaii. Whoa. Well, thanks for the ride. I got a few chores to do, then I'm gonna go to the corner, get my car, and I'll meet you at the office. If you have any problems with the car, I'll pick you up. No, sir. I want you at your desk and working on this story. See you in a bit. in this place. Just two. You stay put. Stay put. Yes, sir. Look. Take whatever you want. You want a camera? I got a very expensive camera. What else you got? You want money? I got some money in my purse by the door. You won't open? Because the lock is kind of tricky. You didn't... You didn't have to do that. You can get it fixed. How can I fix it if you cut the lever? You get a new piece. You get somebody to sew it on, too. Maybe three bucks. It won't matter. It'll be fine. Ten bucks? I mean to go to the bank. Look, I'll write you a check. I'll write you a check for a lot of money. How stupid you think I am? Please. Just take whatever you want and then go. There's not enough here. You know if you Joe Beach up in Santa Barbara? Yeah. What's there? Could be us this weekend. This weekend isn't good for me. I have about five lessons I'm supposed to give that I'd have to cancel. Well, how about a weekend after this one, then? Oh, I still have lessons. Weekends just aren't good for me right now. Even if you didn't have lessons? I don't know. Right. Sorry. 
sorry, Art. It, it's a nice offer. It's okay. I hate to get sand in my car anyway. <laughs> Look, Art, it, it's just me. I'm a nutty person. I want to keep seeing you. But, uh... I'm just not ready for weekends out of town yet. Is that okay? How about weekends in town? Okay. How about I play tennis with Rossi on Saturday and then complain to you about him over dinner? Sounds nice. I finally hit one in. I'm terrified. Is this knife scary? That's one of the scarier elements. You really don't think I would hurt you, do you? No, of course you wouldn't. I like you. You know that, don't you? I've been watching you. Is that what this is? Are you gonna rape me? What do you think? You think I need to get it like that? No, no, of course you don't. I've got a girlfriend. I bet you have a lot of girlfriends. Look, you don't seem like a bad guy. I mean, I don't want to see you get caught. So maybe you should go now. I mean, I'm not gonna report this or anything, but if somebody else sees you, then they might. Who else? Well, a neighbor. Or this guy, he's gonna be coming to pick me up. When? Should be pretty soon. Then I'll kill him. I'll kill him when he comes. Look, I'll give you the keys to my car. Do you have a car? I'll give you mine, then you can get away. I don't wanna go. I like it here. I want to make love to you. No, you don't. I mean, you you don't want to make love to someone that doesn't want you to. Oh! No, you do what I say. Okay, okay, just don't hurt me, okay? Just please don't hurt me. Under cell, okay? Okay. Just lay out the facts, electronic, convince himself. I got it. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Hey. I, uh, I was just looking over your memo on the Mr. Ginty story. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What do you think? Something there, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, a disgruntled former employee making charges in the company denying them doesn't exactly sizzle off of the page. What do you mean? We're talking about a $400,000 slush fund. A scandal that involves a contest that a million kids play every day. If we make our case, we've really got something. Well, anyway, that's the way I see it. Charlie, we've seen secretaries walking around with expensive jewelry. Rich boyfriends. Okay, that doesn't prove anything, but uh, we have records of transactions from the training fund, which we're trying to verify. And we know that they changed accounting firms on this contest at least three times. Why don't we run a story on this ex-employee's allegations? Smoke them out. I want to build up the story more before we let them know what we have. Or everyone will clam up. Then where are we? Why, why don't we get a list of the contest winners? Can we do that? It's a matter of public record, isn't it? Let's see who some of these winners are. Maybe that'll tell us something. Does law enforcement have this yet? I'll check around. Go easy, Rossi. We don't want him to go charging in and ruin what we have, either. You better make some phone checks with the cops. Thanks, Charlie. You see, Lou, how much more you accomplish with a reasoned approach? It's hot. 
isn't it? Yes. You're just gonna tell the cops, I know it. No, I'm not. You can identify me. I really think I won't remember you. See, I'm not real good with faces, and um, I'm supposed to wear glasses, but I don't. And I'm really just not going to tell anybody about this. Why don't you please just call me? You liked it, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes, of course. You didn't act like you liked it. I don't show it much. That's just the way I am. I don't know why you had to do this. I mean, I'm sure things haven't been easy for you in your life. And I don't want to make things any rougher. So would you please just go? I'm not going. And this time, you're going to act like you like it. You may be ahead of the DA on this. What do you got there? A list of the past winners in Mr. Ginty's sweepstakes. Okay, we had a lot of checking to do. Has Sharon come in yet? I haven't seen her. It's 3 o'clock. I'm gonna try your house. These represent three contests going back to May of last year. Yeah, I can see that. You wanna take the first one? Fine. Thanks. Okay. Rossi? Huh? Lisa Persigian. Who? Lou? Lisa Persigian. She won a Mercedes, which was the grand prize in this contest. Here's a clip that shows her at a Beverly Hills fundraiser with her then fiance, Elliot Kibbe. Yeah, well, isn't he the executive for Mr. Ginty's that you interviewed? Sure, but they can't do that. Employees or relatives of employees cannot enter the contest. Even a crooked accounting firm wouldn't let that by. Nice, Billy. A fiance isn't a relative yet. Uh huh. And from the looks of Lisa, she's not the type to do a lot of lunching at Mr. Ginty's. Even the Beverly Hills Mr. Ginty's. You're a nice girl. I like talking to you. Are there many cops in your neighborhood? Never see them. Your neighbors are gonna wonder what a white guy's doing in your apartment. I have a lot of white friends. But I've been here a long time. So I could spot me as soon as I go out there. Not if you leave like a friend. They won't think anything of it. If you just act cool and leave like a friend, nobody will think anything of it. You're smart, you know that? Yeah. I don't need the money I took from you. No, you keep it. Just go now, okay? Now would be a real good time, you know, for you to go before the neighbors get home from work and all. Maybe, maybe we could do this again sometime. I don't think that would be a good idea. Just please go. should go up higher. Where? Second graph? Second graph, maybe even first graph. Oh, I'll have to rewrite the entire lead. So? Lead's good, Luke. Lee is good. It can still be because he put the prices up there. How's the fast food, fast bus story? A key witness has disappeared, driven her Mercedes into the sunset. I can't find Alyssa Parsigian anywhere in the entire L.A. area. Maybe she married someone else. You can still be in town. And, and what, what about that Mercedes she won? Maybe we should try checking the Mercedes service places. In L.A.? Check a month. Oh, geez, just a minute. 
Shannon. Where the hell have you been? I'm going to use a little help around here this afternoon. I told Donovan I'd have this ready for deadline. You could have called at least. We're in a communications business. We should try communicating with each other. Right. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Just a second. We we'll get on that phony doctor story first thing tomorrow. Well, Rosenthal on it. He has the background. He has medical training. No, but he's a hypochondriac. Close enough. Good night, Good night. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you too. Good night. Night. Well, good night. Good night. So what happened? More car trouble? I said I'd pick you up. Well, no. Oh. You didn't even ask about our story. You know, we got a list of contest winners, and it looks like we can tie one to a Mr. Ginty's executive. Great. That's real great. Yeah. If you make your desk any neater, they're going to start wondering if you really have talent. Yeah. Well. Hey. There's something wrong. You sore at me. No. Did you hear some bad news today or something? No, it's just, um, this guy attacked me. What do you mean? Good night, guys. Good night, Lou. Well, I guess he raped me. You guess? He did rape you? Yeah. I mean, he didn't hurt me or anything. I don't care what you guys find. I'll always love the double cheese Dublin burger. Good night. And you came into work? You can stop working now, Sharon. Go home. No. No, I can't go back there tonight. Okay. Then you won't. Have you called the cops and reported this? No. Are you going to? I hadn't thought about it. Hadn't thought about it? Well, I really don't want to tell anybody about this. You think I should call the police? Well, the only thing is, if you don't report it, and nobody even tries to catch this guy, he could do it again. Would you call him? Of course. Sure. I'll do it. Hi, uh, we'd like to see a doctor. Okay, what's the problem? Ray. Okay, uh, we'll get you right in to see somebody. Uh, could you step down here, please? I just need to get some information first. I'll let you do that, sir. Do you want a cup of coffee? It would be advisable for you not to drink anything until you've been examined. Why? Could destroy evidence. It's the same reason why you shouldn't shower or change your clothes. I already did. Do I still need an examination? Yes. Uh, this form will just take a minute. Uh, your first name? Uh, Sharon. Your last name, Sharon? McNeil. McNeil. We Irish have to stick together. Well, it's nice that you still have your sense of humor. But you should know that you're in shock now. Things are going to get kind of different later. Thanks, but I'll be okay. I know you will. I just want you to be prepared. I'm fine. Let's just get it done. No, I'm down here at the emergency room with Sharon. What's wrong? Well, she was raped. What? When? This afternoon. This afternoon? She was in right at deadline. I know. She came in afterwards and worked. Oh, boy. And I was chewing her up. <sighs> Me too, I know. How is she? She's okay. I mean, considering she's, she's okay. Did they get the guy? No, not yet. She's in there with the police now. I'll get back in there. You want me to come down there? No, I don't think so. I just thought you ought to know. Right. Okay. We'd like as accurate a description of your assailant as possible. All right. He was 30, 31, white, light brown hair. 
He had on a green shirt, jeans, sneakers. Uh, hair on his arms and legs, less on the back and chest. He had bad acne on his back. His hands, forearms, face, and neck were more tanned than the rest of him, so he probably works in a long sleeve, rolled-up shirt. He had a strawberry mark here, and a mole here, and he had bad breath. That's very good. I'm a reporter. It's my training. Why don't you just tell us what happened? I was outside doing laundry, and when I came back, there he was. The knife. He forced me on the couch and tied my wrists. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? He uh, looked around for things to rob. That went on for a while. Then he began pacing like he was unsure what he wanted. So then I began to think that he wanted something else, like to attack me or something. So I asked him. You brought the subject of rape up first? Well, I guess. What difference does that make? It shouldn't make any difference. Let's go on. What happened next? He, uh, began pacing about, agitated. Then he kissed me. Then he took my clothes off. And he took his shirt off. And he pulled on his pants. What happened? Then he raped me. I know it sounds like I just let him. Maybe I could have kicked him or screamed. I mean, shh, don't they tell you to scream? I didn't. He had a knife. You did what you had to do. Right. Right. Well, this is it. All the comforts of the public library. Joe, you don't have to clean up. Yeah, yeah, let me just get some of this stuff. It's getting to the point where you have to start reading this stuff or move. You hungry? Not really. You didn't have any dinner. Here, I just bought some bananas. Two weeks ago. Wait, apples are okay after two weeks. Thanks. Okay, sleeping assignments. Uh, girls in the Blue Jay bunkhouse, boys in the Metal Ark tent. Where is it? Just past the latrine? Yeah, come on, I'll show you. I have to get you some fresh sheets anyway. You don't have to get me fresh sheets. Yes, I do. The last time I changed them was after I bought them. Nice sheets. Forest dreams make you feel like you're sleeping in a pine forest if you sleep with your eyes open. I probably will. Joe? Huh? This is really nice of you. Look, I'm a lousy host, so uh, what you have to do, if you want anything, just take it. Um, if you want to talk or anything in the middle of the night, I'll just be there on the couch. Anyway, good night. Good night, Joe. Last time we had lunch at your favorite place. Next time we'll have it at mine. This is fine. What's good here? Anything that comes in a glass. White wine. Two, please. <laughs> kind of a lousy thing happened at work. Well, not at work. What? One of the reporters was raped yesterday. Who? You met Sharon, new reporter, black, good-looking. Some guy broke into her apartment and held her prisoner for several hours. Apparently had a knife. Poor girl. Well, she seems to be okay. It's gonna take her a long time to get over it. Well, she seems fine, really. No, it will. I still haven't. Haven't what? Gotten over it. When did it happen? Well, more than two years ago. Where? 
guy here in L.A. right after I moved down from San Francisco. In fact, it was a guy who was helping me move stuff into my new apartment. It was a friend? No, a girlfriend of mine knew him, and I'd met him maybe twice. He offered to help me move. I was really impressed by how friendly people were down here. And then at one point, we were alone in the apartment, and he overpowered me and raped me. Did you report it? You bet. And? They arrested him, and of course, he was released on bail right away, and then there was a trial, and then he got off. He got off? That was his word against mine. And he was this upstanding CPA, and I was this tennis-playing chick from the sexually uninhibited Bay Area. I didn't have a chance with him or the judge. A jeweler in Westwood says he sold over 50 watches to a corporate officer at Mr. Gindy's. Now we have to show how that character is connected to the training fund. All right, Melissa Tomlinson, Nate Parsegian, 821 Castle Way, San Marino. All right. Very nice, very nice. Oh, look, we can run it up from here. That's terrific. What's terrific? We like terrific around here. Sharon just found our ex-fiancé. Oh, that's real good. Yeah. Maybe you'd like to lay out of the story for now. Take some time off. Uh, no, I'd like to work the story. Okay, but take it at your own pace. There's no pressure. Yes, there is. I don't want to get beat on it. Well, you know what I mean. We just want hey, to help you. I can handle it. Okay, everybody? I can handle it. It's not that big a deal. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Come in. Thank you. Come in, gentlemen. I just heard about Miss McNeil. Yeah. It's beginning to look like we're in the middle of an epidemic. We seem to hear about this sort of thing almost daily. Do we have the new lights in the parking lot yet? No, not yet. Well, then let's hurry that along, all right? Yeah. She wasn't attacked in the parking lot. I understand, but at least we can do what we can do. How is she? She seems to be doing all right. She's out working on the Mr. Ginty story now. How could you send her out on a story? She wanted to go. Have they caught the rapist? No. You know, with all of the resources we have, you'd think that we'd be able to do something about it. We may not be able to do anything about this case, but it does seem to me our coverage of this subject is very light. We don't want to sensationalize rape. People still look at it as a sexy thing. I hate those headlines, pretty co-ed is seventh victim. So do I. Well, we've been so careful not to be exploitive about it, we fail to inform our readers how widespread this is. Exactly. Do you know how many of these criminals have gotten off scot-free? Why haven't I seen anything about that in the newspaper? Or those who are caught, how they get out on bail to prey on more victims before they're even tried for their first crime. We could do better there. You've got a right to be upset. This is not upset, Mr. Grant. This is anger. I am angry. I am angry! I'm angry because I'm frightened! Every woman has to be! It's not just women. Everyone's vulnerable to some kind of attack. Not this kind of attack. It's widespread, it's frequent, it's a giant problem that has never really been faced. And you can't help but wonder if men were the ones being raped, then wouldn't the problem get solved? So we wait outside this house in San Marino, Alyssa, Parsigi, and Tomlinson, for what, at least two hours? Yeah. Boy, Kibby must have really dumped her hard, because then she couldn't tell us enough. Nice. Does anyone want more coffee? No, thanks. No. How are you doing? Fine. That's good. I think I know how I'd feel if it happened to me. But it wouldn't have happened, right? I didn't say that. It could have happened to anyone. We all know that. Do we? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Boy, I really messed up. Messed up? This wasn't your fault. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
Sharon, let's get together, talk. Yeah, that'd be great. As soon as I get some time. It's really hard to talk to now. I know. I got enough Brussels sprouts to feed an army. <laughs> what army eats Brussels sprouts? The Belgian army. <laughs> Um, you know that place you mentioned near Santa Barbara? A refugio. Yeah. I'm thinking it'd be kind of nice to see it. I mean, the two of us. You know, go up there, get sand in the car. Oh, okay. You don't exactly sound overjoyed. Oh, sure, that's great. That's cool, All right. Make your own damn Brussels sprouts. Make your own dinner. Good night, Art. Wait a minute. Come on, come on. What is it? Ever since you found out I was raped, you've been treating me like I was tainted. That's not true. I don't need this. Neither do I. <laughs> you don't. It happened to me, you know. Well, what the hell were you doing alone in an apartment with a guy you don't even know, anyway? My friend knew him, and he was helping me. Right. He was just an ordinary guy. Then he was like a different person. Mean, tough. He knew exactly what he wanted. He caught me by surprise. He was stronger than me, and he attacked me. God, it's all coming back. Carol. What? I want to put my arms around you, but I hold back because I... Because I'm damaged goods. Because I don't know how you'll react. I don't know if it disgusts you or frightens you or what. Did I seem disgusted or frightened before you found out about this? You were uptight and guarded. I mean, physically, things have gone smoother with other women. Great. You must have felt that, too. So why didn't you just take off? Because I like you. The physical stuff isn't all that important. <laughs> Look. For a while, I wasn't too crazy about men. I disliked men. And then it became sort of okay to be around much older men or much younger men. And then finally, I, I got to the point where I could go out, not with any one person for, for very long, though. And tell you. It was comfortable with you. Now it's just turned into a big mess. I don't think it's a big mess. A little mess. You're being kind, and that's nice, but you have to know, I'm still a mess. And I'm just not very good yet at being close. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. some of this material, but, uh, probably got a lot of work to do. Nah, come on in. I haven't done any work in an hour and a half. I was starting to feel dissolute. You want some soup? No, I'll have to go pick Sharon up in about five minutes. Oh, then you don't have time for a graceful approach. You could tell me what you're here for. Lou, I feel so terrible about what happened to Sharon. We all do. Yeah, but nobody else was responsible. Oh, come on, Rossi, you're not responsible. I was with her minutes before the guy attacked her. I, I just dropped her off at her place and, and drove off. I keep thinking if only I'd gone inside with her. You can't guard all the women you know 24 hours a day. I should have sensed something was wrong all that afternoon. She was supposed to come into work. I knew that. I called her. There was no answer. I should have known there was a problem. I've done what? Gone over there. I don't know. Just keep thinking, somehow, I could run into the guy who did it. And do what? Strangle him? Strangling would be good. Drawing and quartering. Bludgeoning. A lot of good options there. I know it's crazy, but it makes me crazy. Now, she's fine about it. She is? Yeah, except that... She won't go back to her apartment. She's real calm. Says she's lucky the guy didn't use a knife on her or hit her. 
says she wasn't a virgin, so what's the problem? She just wants to put it all behind her. I don't think she's sleeping too much, though. Bossy, you've been good to her. Oh, yeah, I haven't done anything. No. You let her stay with you. You've helped her. I just have a feeling this whole thing may not have caught up with her. Well, maybe. And when it does, I know you'll be there for her. Oh, yeah, sure. fellow may be a good reporter, but you're certainly much nicer to look at. Get your damn hands off of me, you stupid creep! Just stay away! You think you can take advantage of any woman that comes near you? What gives you the right? Look, I'm Just sorry. stay away! Just keep your distance! Just stay away! Just stay away! It was unprofessional, but I'm okay now. What are you about? I'll go see him. Well, we don't really need another interview with Kitty. I'll pick it up. No, if we have to have it, then I'll get it. I don't think that would be such a good idea right now. Stop patronizing me. I'm trying very hard not to fall apart here, but you're not helping. What if you did fall apart a little? No! God. It was so awful. I thought it was going to kill me. And now I, I, I can't feel safe anymore. I feel like I can't be myself anymore. You are yourself. Sex is so much a part of what you are. Rape isn't sex, it's violence. Yes, but it's not just getting mugged or robbed either. The way I was raised, sex is something that you have. And to give it is your choice. And it's all connected up with the way you look at yourself and the way you feel about yourself. And yet, just because of the way men and women are built, a man can just take that. I just feel so invaded. But it was under duress. Look, if you are forced to sign a contract at gunpoint, that's not valid. It doesn't count. I know. I know. I've been telling myself that it doesn't count. But it happened. He was in his house. He was in... Oh, God, I don't know where I began and the world ends anymore. I don't own my own body. And I learned that I never did. There's no part of me that I can protect. Not my house. Not my property. Not my sexuality. Not my life. But you did protect your life. You did. I, I'm so glad you did. Sharon, you are a terrific person. This hasn't made you less terrific, less anything. You are so intelligent and talented and pretty and uh, who do i talk to about the trib's lousy coverage of women's tennis hi i'm the guy in charge of lousy coverage Thought maybe you would like to take me out to lunch. I would. So I haven't scared you off yet? Well, you're more trouble than you're worth, but this is business. Business? You're going to fill me in on Trib's coverage of tennis. Right. Come on in. 
I finally called my mom last night and told her. How did she react? Real good. She was upset, of course, but real good. Made me feel like I was 10 years old again. She wants me to come back home to Kansas City for a while. Why don't you go? It'll be all right? Your job will be here when you get back. Whenever that is. The Mr. Guinea story isn't finished. Okay, we'll get down. Check in with us. Is a child responsible for a senseless murder? Police search the streets for a 14-year-old hitman tonight on Law & Order. Now, he's a crook using a poverty program as a front for his crimes. A cop exposes a con man on Police Story, next on a and &E.